Nityanandam. We begin our fourth session. Begins with what is Vedic marriage? The ultimate purpose of Vedic marriage is understood by this one single conscious undertaking to take the responsibility and create a society without depression. It is intended with the purpose of maximizing enjoyment and creativity. For the couple, this unique time-tested system, Grahastashrama, is designed to lead the couple to fulfillment in the relationship, growing beyond it and helping each other realize the ultimate goal of enlightenment. This fulfilled relationship extends to reach out to the community, the city, the state, the country and the world at large. The underlying context is only experiencing the power of feeling and living, prema shakti and atma shakti, through responsibility and enriching others. A stable family unit is the foundation for a stable, peace-loving community in the whole world. Let's have a look at what Vedic marriage speaks of. The seven vows taken by the couple to support this form of living is First, all that is required for the body like food, clothing, a place to live, they will create and sustain together. All things that give intellectual and inner strength like yoga, meditation, etc., they will practice together. One will not force oneself upon the other at the physical or the mental level when the other person does not want it. Man will help to overcome the illusions the woman holds in the form of fear and insecurity and the woman will help to overcome the illusions the man holds in the form of lust. Together, they will fulfill the responsibilities towards the ancestors, living or dead, guru, animals and nature. At the time of low or high moods, one will not disturb the other. They will keep up all the forgotten vows, which has not been mentioned as well. The seven vows are then concluded with a chant that declares that the couple are now friends who will strive not to allow the friendship to deteriorate in any fashion. The concept of divorce did not exist in the Vedic times. The couple take these vows in front of the sacred fire, which acts as a witness and they promise to keep up their vows till death does them apart. This very tradition was meant to create a very stable and secure civilization. The couple begin to live in reality. Every other negative social or personal problem happening in a society or to an individual is only a result of living in a fantasy and not reality. It is the fantasy coupled with low esteem that sets up expectations which when not met creates a disharmony in the relationship. When you ask why in a relationship, understand? When you ask why in a relationship, it becomes a business as you start looking at it from the angle of greed and fear. The key to a beautiful relationship is the ability to live the relationship with no resistance not with acceptance, but with no resistance. There are two types of cognition, bonding and liberation cognition. The bonding cognition is that which makes me do an action based on everything else other than me as a reason. I repeat, a bonding cognition is that which makes me do an action based on everything else other than me as a reason. A liberation cognition is taking an action based on me and only me as the reason for cognition. I choose it because I choose it. Please understand there is no why. Instead, this is it. Now what? Very beautiful shift. This is it. This is the problem existing. Now what? It is this which liberates you. And that is when you learn to unclutch. It is only when unclutching happens that one is able to clutch without friction. 
a beautiful sentence. It is only when unclutching happens that one is able to clutch without friction. What man wants from a relationship is different and what woman wants from a relationship is different. So man should become a woman to be in relationship and give what the woman wants. And the woman should become a man in the relationship and give what a man needs. That is why sansar is sannyas. That is why samsar is sannyas. For a good relationship, one needs to work towards it. Relationship is not a business. It is an art where one spends time, energy and intelligence to create it. To reap the benefits of a good relationship, one needs to work towards it. That is sadhana or practice, effort. It is only then that the extraordinary joy of sharing love becomes a lifestyle for couples. As mentioned, this can only happen when the couple know how to unclutch. This is home when the new entrant to the family also understands what true love is. This also forms the basis of conscious parenting and sets the stage for a deep understanding of a true relationship between the parent and the child. A mutually supportive family is created and a child in such a family helps the parents to lead a more fulfilled life and the parent in turn helps the child discover his or her life's purpose. There has to be a deep-rooted responsibility towards the concept of a family. Then this is a stable family. This leads to contribution to society in a positive way, paving the way for a stable community. Birthing happening in such a community is conscious birthing. Understanding and expressing the power of feeling arises only when one lives responsibility. When you feel responsible in your being for any problem or anything, you find solution for that problem or that situation. We will have a question. What does being mean? Means the zone from where you take decision is being. The zone from where you cognize is being. Please listen. The zone from which the cognition happens in you is the being, which is deeper than thinking. Unfortunately, only when you complete with your thinking, with your emotions, you will under understand the difference between thinking, being, emotions and all that. Otherwise, it is all messed up. It is all like completely messed up. If you don't feel you are responsible for something, you don't even think in that line. If you feel you are responsible for something, only then you will even look into that part of your life. Restricting your being, feeling responsible is what is called as conditioning. Every person who preaches patriotism tries to condition the responsibility only confining themselves to that country. Every man who tries to teach religion conditions you, restricts your responsibility only to that religion. And that is what is happening in the present day society. The concept of a nuclear family and you feeling responsible only for that family. And that is what is called as conditioned responsibility. Understand restricting your responsibility should never be allowed. You are a human being. You are responsible for the whole cosmos, not, not just planet Earth. Your being responsible, that is your being should be completely responsible, taking responsibility for everything. A being without feeling responsible is useless. A being filled with responsibility is the most powerful energy. Being feeling responsible is an energy center. Even when you go near that being, you will catch responsibility, you will catch that feeling immediately. Decide from your being, you will feel responsible for the whole world. Suddenly, you will see all your actions will have authenticity. The thinking will have integrity. Whether you understand or not, whether you directly apply it or not, the moment you bring responsibility into your being, your every action becomes authentic. You need to know a very important truth 
The it's okay attitude is the attitude which destroys your life. Responsibility in your being takes away that it's okay attitude. It's as simple as that. You want to do something, you want to complete a job of say possibly cleaning a cupboard and that particular day you're feeling a little lazy, you don't want to do it and you say it's okay, what is there if I don't do it now? Now that it's okay is the one which is not meant to be in our system. Responsibility in our being takes away this it's okay attitude. If you feel responsible for the whole world, you expand to the whole world. It is the amount of responsibility you bring into your being that makes your life juicy. If you bring more responsibility into your cognition, your life becomes exciting. Poverty in your cognition becomes boredom in your life. I repeat, poverty in your cognition becomes boredom in your life. That is why you feel life is boring. It is dull. If you bring strength in your cognition, responsibility in your cognition, you will be excited and you will be enlightened. You will be excited and you will be enlightened. Understand, if your cognition shrinks, you also shrink. Your actions shrink. Your integrity shrinks. If your cognition expands with more responsibility, authenticity happens in your actions. Integrity happens in your thinking. Power of responsibility. Please listen. Whenever you become tired, facing conflicts, contradictions, you don't feel responsible. And that is the reason why tiredness happens to you. Ability to face conflicts, ability to encounter contradictions, ability to face problems is one of the most important qualities you need. A very important quality you need to be a leader. Feeling responsible, please listen. Feeling responsible gives you that power. Feeling responsible gives you the power and it makes you a leader. If all the patterns which create panic pattern, the root patterns which cause panic patterns in you, only if they are cleared, only if they are removed, you will have the ability to handle responsibility. And I am defining this word in very clear pure form of definition. Nididhyasana means declaring and living, means deciding to be responsible for your actions, deciding to be responsible for your feelings. Now, if you feel you are the head of a family, you feel responsible for your family, you feel responsible for your father, the mother, wife, son, daughter, because all of them are your family. Immediately we have doubts, how can I be responsible? Anything may happen, but don't be afraid to dive into that feeling responsible just because of your imaginary complications. Don't stop yourself feeling it first. The problem is because of your imaginary complications alone, the first feeling itself is getting stopped. There are tons and tons of ways and methods you can transform without complexity if you start feeling it. The feeling responsible, if you allow that inside you, just simply feeling responsible, if you allow that inside you, all these imaginary complications which you are having before allowing that feeling will disappear. Do not entertain these imaginary complications. Complete with those imaginary complications. Allow this feeling first to want to be responsible. Take little time for this feeling to sink inside you and be in sync with your actions. It has to sink inside and you have to be in sync with these actions. Then responsibility becomes a synergy. It will be in sync with your energy. Energy will expand. Your imaginary complications disappear. Completing with the imaginary complications is the first step towards enlightenment. Tapas means completing with imaginary complications. Tapas is nothing but completing with imaginary complications. Ojas is a Sanskrit word. Ojas means the ability to complete with imaginary complications. The imaginary complications can be completed because it is imaginary. It's as simple as that. Please understand, cosmos is waiting to empower every one of you. 
cosmos is literally begging every one of you to become powerful. It is unfortunate you think cosmos also functions with the same political system with which we are functioning. The top guy never wants anyone to rise. But you should know the logic of cosmos is totally different. The prime minister of a country will never want anyone else to become a prime minister because then his identity is lost. But the head of cosmos wants everyone to become the head of cosmos because the more and more heads, the more and more expansion. You are not replacing him. You are not occupying his seat. You are reproducing him. Everyone is independently intelligent. There is no need for a head to exist. Bringing responsibility into your feeling is Nididhyasana. We now move on to Vedic rituals. This would have been the reason behind the beautiful Vedic ceremonies performed in ancient times so as to make the woman feel happy and not have negative emotions. To begin with is the Garbhadhan, the sacrament of impregnation where amidst the chant and music, the man approached his wife and asked her consent to become the mother of his children. The Punsavanam sacrament was done in the second or the third month of pregnancy to provide vigor to the child and the Simanto Nayana sacrament in the fourth or the fifth month where the husband takes care of his pregnant wife and keeps her cheerful by fulfilling all her wishes. As much as the husband plays an important role in keeping the wife cheerful, it also becomes necessary for the wife to practice meditation and release the negative emotions and also the asanas and pranayamas in the yoga practice to remove tension from the body and infuse it with oxygen. 